In this video, we're looking at the 10 most sought after transmog items in the game. This will only include armor items since we're going to do a separate video on the most farmed weapons. And this will only include items that are still obtainable in the modern game. First up at number 10, we have the Dark Ranger's Quiver. This item is a back item, and so it's technically classified as a cloak, not a quiver. The Dark Ranger's Quiver only drops for hunters from Sylvanas Windrunner, who's the final boss in this Sanctum of Domination raid from the Shadowlands expansion. While quivers used to actually exist in game for hunters, these pouches were removed from the game with the launch of Cataclysm. This item is highly sought after for three main reasons. First, it shows an actual quiver on a hunter's back making it unique in its own right for transmog and aesthetically pleasing for hunters to use a bow. Second, it has a cool ability called Withering Fire, which does some AoE shadow damage every 10 shots fired. Finally, the item itself, called Dark Ranger's Quiver, lends itself to players and RPers alike who want their character to be a Dark Ranger. After players complete the quest chain Return to Lordaeron added in patch 9.2.5, they unlock the Dark Ranger Elf customization which works perfectly alongside the Dark Ranger's Quiver. In fact, Dark Rangers have long been speculated to appear in the game as a class or spec, and are now going to come in the new form of a Hunter Hero spec in the War Within expansion. However, since the Dark Ranger's Quiver only drops for Hunters, and fewer Hunters want it for their Dark Ranger purposes, this item is only number 10 on this list. Next at number 9, we have the Fell Flame Inferno Shoulder Pads from Antorus the Burning Throne. These glowy orb shoulder pads are a really unique look among shoulder pads. The original item is actually called the Meditation Spheres of Chiji and is part of the Tier 21 raid set for Monks from Antorus. However, only Monks can loot the Meditation Spheres. Because they were so popular though, Blizzard added the Fell Flame Infernal Shoulder Pads, which share the same appearance as the Meditation Spheres of Chiji, but they can be looted and equipped by all leather wearing classes. However, to make it a bit more fair to this item that was originally Monk only, the Fell Flame Infernal Shoulder Pads drop at an extremely low drop rate, usually less than 1%. And in addition to that, they only drop from farm trash in Antorus. As you can imagine, this means players spend a lot of time farming for the Fell Flame Infernal Shoulder Pads. Another unique thing about the Fell Flame Infernal Shoulder Pads is that they share each recolor version by raid difficulty with their monk counterpart recolor. In Raid Finder, both shoulder pieces are purpley and voidy. On Normal, they look more light infused. On Heroic difficulty, they're Fell Tainted and glow green. And finally on Mythic, they're red and I guess infused with blood or presumably whatever red stuff Argus is made of. Anyways, this means that if you want a specific color variation of the Fell Flame Infernal Shoulder Pads, you can only run the raid once per week on the one difficulty you want to get that recolor from. Next up at number 8, we have the Cursed Vision of Sargeras. This leather head slot item drops from Illidan himself in the Black Temple. This item appears to be Illidan's blindfold itself, and when equipped, it is completely black in appearance. This item also has a unique ability, which allows the player to use and be able to track demons on the minimap for 10 minutes. As you can imagine, this blindfold is popular with demon hunters, both the class and our peers before the demon hunter class was added in the Legion expansion. Since the item is leather, this means the item can drop for demon hunters in Black Temple as well. Blizzard knows this is a popular transmog item and has placed two references in the game to it. The first is an easter egg that can be found while within the Well of Eternity dungeon and in the Caverns of Time and Cataclysm. After the players cleared out the font courtyard with Illidan, if you equip the Cursed Vision of Sargeras and use it, players will be able to see the Well of Eternity stalker demons that were otherwise hidden. The next reference came in Mist of Pandaria, when after completing a Brawler's Guild duel and receiving a Brawler's Purse, players could open the purse and receive Imitation Vision of Sargeras. While Illidan is farmed far more often for the Twin Blades of Azanoth, this item is much more common than Illidan's weapons, as his blindfold only has a roughly 20% chance to drop. Presumably, this blindfold was given to Illidan by Sargeras himself after he burned out Illidan's eyes. And while that itself is pretty epic, it doesn't explain how Illidan has stolen the blindfold back by the time he's released from this prison in Legion during the cinematic final in Nighthold. Nitpicking aside, this truly is a one-of-a-kind item, and is still sought after by many players, but especially by demon hunters, of course. And at number 7, we have the Diadem of the Highborn. This plate item worn in the head slot has a very low chance to drop from the trash in the Tomb of Sargeras Ray. The drop rate is at best 1% from a few murlocs, meaning that a lot of farming is required in order to obtain this transmog. What makes this transmog so popular is not only is it beautiful, but it also fits into the RP community of the Highborn. While Highborn have never officially been added as a playable race to the game, players can make either Void Elves and Blood Elves and pretend they are uncorrupted. High Elves and the Alliance seem feasible as characters such as Varisa Windrunner are closely aligned with the Silver Covenant and the Alliance. As you can imagine, having an item called Diadem of the Highborn is pretty cool for High Elf RPers, since it is from the Highborn that the High Elves descended. As to whom the original owner of the Diadem was, there is only speculation. 
Perhaps it was Queen Ajara at one point, but how, when, and why it ended up underneath the tomb of Sargeras? It's possible it was just some highborn noble who left the item in the temple as a tribute to Elune in ages long past. Whatever the reasoning, this item is highly sought after by a few groups of niche players, and it deserves a spot on this list. And at number 6, we have the first full transmog set on this list. There are a total of 6 transmog sets from a specific building in Wad Garrisons that players can obtain. Alliance players can build a level 3 dwarven bunker inside the garrison, while horde players can build the equivalent called the War Mill. Both of these buildings have quartermasters which offer various transmog items in exchange for a farmable currency called Iron Horde Scraps. Kristen Stoneforge and Grunlek are the names of these two NPCs, and they offer an introductory quest called Scraps of Iron. After turning in 5 scraps of iron, players are awarded with a new rare quality HD version of the Stormwind and Orgrimmar Tavern. This leads into the main reason why the transmog sets are on this list. The vendors offer a transmog set for both Stormwind and Orgrimmar, and the set is very popular, but requires a lot of farming of iron horde scraps. In particular, it almost always wins during the Faction Pride section of the Trial style. In total, these vendors sell 6 sets. The Alliance get the Stormwind set, and the Horde gets the Orgrimmar set, of course. But both vendors also sell 4 different transmog sets for each of the 4 types of gear and WoW. The Plate set is called the Black Rock set, the Cloth set is the Shadowmoon set, the Leather set is the Thunderlord set, and the Mail set is the Warsong set. While only moderately popular, what makes these sets so difficult to obtain is that it requires a tedious amount of grinding for Iron Horde scraps, as well as some additional other pieces. For example, it takes a total of 410 Iron Horde scraps, as well as an additional 3 other, more rarely dropped unique gear tokens, to get the full Stormwind set, and that's excluding the Tavern and Shield. So what makes the Iron Horde scraps so hard to farm? Well, first, as you might expect, the Iron Horde scraps only drop from Iron Horde hostile NPCs throughout alternate Draenor. This drop rate is 50% at best, but most of the time it's around 20 or 10%. Since a relatively few Iron Horde mobs in Talador have the highest drop rate of 50%, those are often farmed the most. And you may even face competition while farming. Remember, some 400 of the Iron Horde scraps are needed for one set. And if you were truly insane and wanted to get every item piece across both Alliance and Horde, you would need 2,570 Iron Horde scraps. Don't forget that players can also spend Iron Horde scraps as a daily quest called Scrap Meltdown to get a new champion armor and equipment, which means if you're a player and accidentally or wanted to do the daily, they would be down 25 probably hard earned scraps. And as if all of that wasn't bad enough, for each helmet, shoulder, or belt piece you want, you have to also get a special gear token called Battered Iron Horde Helmet, Crushed Iron Horde Pauldrons, or Ravaged Iron Horde Belt. Not only are all of the drop rates for these items much lower, but they're required for every head, shoulder, and belt piece meaning the player must farm 6 of each if they want all the appearances. And on top of all that, the scraps and gear tokens are of course soulbound, so you can't buy them on the auction house or send them to an alt. With all of the RNG involved, you can imagine how long it takes to complete this set, with it possibly taking months to years, depending on your luck and dedication. As such, these 6 transmog sets definitely deserve a spot on this list, since they are without a doubt some of the most farmed for transmog armors in the entire game. Now we move on to number 5, where we have another transmog set. The Judgment Armor is a tier 2 paladin armor set, and is one of the most iconic and well known in the history of the game. It has an evocative gold and black design with offsets of white and red. Although it is only limited to paladins, this transmog is so popular that it has even become synonymous with paladins, and is thought by many players to be one of the best looking sets in the game, even if it comes from classic. It's based on an inquisitory like outfit inspired by the Silver Hand, according to Kadium, a Blizzard community manager. Most of the pieces drop from Blackwing Lair, and the leg plates are dropped from Ragnaros and Molten Core. Originally, the headpiece dropped from Anixia, but when Anixia Raid was redesigned in Wrath, the source for the headpiece was changed in Nefarian. This piece and set goes to show how popular it was, with Blizzard going out of the way to add it to the loot table of another boss in Raid, just so players could collect it. And of course, tier set bonuses are impressive as well with the 3 set increasing the Paladin's auras by 50 yards. Although, of course, since it's a legacy item, the tier set doesn't actually work. The transmog set was so popular that Blizzard added a recolored purple version in the Burning Crusade from TBC Dungeon Bosses, and this set also remains a popular transmog set. This is the only class-specific transmog set on this list, but it's with good reason as it is essentially the poster child of transmog sets, and so it comes at number 5. Up next, we have the next Ramus tier 3 sets. The original Naxxramas set was removed when Wrath launched, and the tier 7 sets that replaced it were similar but had different color schemes. It wasn't until Mr. Pandaria that the original tier 3 sets became attainable in the auction house. Finally, Dragonflight re-added the classic version of Naxxramas, allowing players to collect the original tier 3 sets, but with some caveats. 
As you can imagine, finally being able to get transmog sites that have been unavailable in the game for over 14 years makes the new acquisition model of the tier 3 sets extremely popular. While the mechanics of obtaining access to the classic Skullman's dungeon and then the original Naxxramas dungeon is too long and too big in scope to discuss in this video, suffice it to say that these tier sets are a pain in the Nax to farm. Players must deal with greedy goblins, farm a variety of special reagents, get good RNG, and fling around old Naxxramas on a grappling hook. In total, the player is going to spend somewhere around 3 million gold and must request that someone who has the original tier 3 set achievement called Drop Dead Gorgeous to craft the item for them. And of course, all of this is only for one class set. And in Classic, where there's 9 classes, meaning the player must repeat the grueling process on at least 4 different characters for each type of armor wearing class. While this new acquisition is definitely unique, its methodology received mixed reviews from the community, and it is a long road of RNG, gold spending, patience, and try not to cry while waiting for someone to accept your crafting order. Next up at number 3, we have the First Seder Spalders. These leather shoulder items have an extremely low drop chance from Xavius, the final boss of the Emerald Nightmare Raid from the Legion expansion. When I say very low, I mean very low. According to Wowhead, they have a drop rate somewhere around 0.3%, or 3 in a thousand. These are the shoulders worn by the Nightmare Lord himself. To say these shoulders are coveted for the transmog would be putting it very mildly. This item became so popular, in fact, that Blizzard even took notice and added it to the Black Market Auction House in BFA. Luckily, the First Aider Spalders are not a class set piece, so any of the four leather wearing classes can equip and learn the transmog. Although, that may not matter soon with the account-wide transmog unlocking options combined in the expansion The War Within. Also, unlike the Felflame Infernal shoulder pads of the number 9 spot, the First Seder Spalders have the same appearance in every raid difficulty. In case you were wondering about the name, yes, Xavius was the First Seder after he accepted the deal with Sargeras during the War of the Ancients, although he would survive and eventually become a servant in Nizoth later. That's a very broad and brief overview of his story, but you can see why he's an interesting character and having his shoulder pads isn't too shabby. And at number 2 on this list, we have the Tabard of the Scarlet Crusade. This Tabard and the Scarlet Crusade have long been a fan favorite organization, so it makes sense why this Tabard is so popular as a transmog piece. The Tabard first dropped from the Scarlet Trainees in the original Scarlet Monastery in the Armory Wing. As an interesting note, it wasn't until the Scourge Evasion in patch 1.13 that the Tabard was added to their loot table. When the dungeon was reworked during Mop, the Tabard's source was removed. Blizzard eventually relented and added it as a rare drop chance from the boss R Master Harlan in patch 5.3. The Scarlet Monastery of Old was brought back into the game in Dragonflight, where the Tabard once again drops from the Scarlet Trainees. So why is the Tabard so popular? Well, there are two main reasons. First, it's a special item for lore nerds and RPers alike. Secondly, when the player is wearing the Tabard, they can buy removed transmog items from the Scarlet Quartermaster at the Dark Moon Fair. The player can only buy these transmogs with the Tabard equipped so they must have the tabard in order to buy the ensembles. That leads us to why the tabard is so hard to get. It only has a 2% drop rate from the Scarlet Trainees and our Master Harlan. That's one out of every 50 attempts. What makes this tabard even more desirable is that the two transmog ensembles sold by the Scarlet Quartermaster are soulbound. One is for plate classes and the other is for the male classes, which means that the player must get a tabard of Scarlet Crusade on both a plate wearing class and a male wearing class in order to collect both ensembles. They look the same for both armor types, but can only be worn when you have the certain version unlocked. Finally, each ensemble costs 10,000 gold. The Quartermaster also sells a cropped version of the Tabard for 50,000 gold, and this version does not have the annoying flaps that the original has. As some fun little easter eggs, the Scarlet Quartermaster accuses the player of being a Dreadlord and also has some choice words if the player is forsaken. Finally, the Quartermaster herself, the one accusing people of being a Dreadlord, is a human with blonde hair, which is suspiciously similar to another powerful once blonde haired mage who is well known to be a Dreadlord. And finally at number 1, the most sought after piece of transmog armor we have, and of course that is the Tusk of Manoroth. These immense shoulder pieces are those worn by the Warchief Garrosh Hellscream, and they can be eluded from at the end of the Siege of Orgrimmar raid. The final raid of Mop is a fan favorite, and these plate shoulders, which have a roughly 0.3% drop chance, are just icing on the cake on top of this great raid. These shoulders are only available in the heroic and mythic versions of the raid, so make sure if you want them that you're a plate wearing class and that you aren't doing the Siege of Orgrimmar and LFR a normal difficulty. Now, for the brief history about the Tusk of Manoroth. Grom Hellscream, Garrosh's father, slew the pit lord Manoroth with his dying breath in order to free the orcs from the fell corruption that they had received after drinking Manoroth's blood. What makes this all more important is that Gromosh was the first orc to drink the blood. Anyways, after Grom's sacrifice, Thrall put up a memorial in Orgrimmar to honor his mentor, complete with the Pit Lord's head. When Garrosh became the warchief who did nothing wrong, he chopped off the tusks and put them on his shoulders. 
The rest of the Pit Lord's head he made as part of the throne in Gromash Hold. The popularity of these tusks cannot be overstated. Players have spent hours, weeks, months, years farming for them, and having them is seen as a symbol of prestige. The tusks were also added in the Black Market Auction House in BFA, but we don't talk about that. Aside from every Maghar Orc warrior named Garrosh with different accents over the letters, these tusks are more important because they represent a core part of Orc's history and story, and one that spans from Warcraft 1 to Warcraft 3 and into WoW. Aside from elves and humans, orcs are WoW's most played race, at least according to data for Azeroth. The Tusks of Manoroth sure do have an imposing presence, and their lore and fantasy are without equal in the entire game, meaning they are, of course, deserving of their one spot on this list. 